handful of sand contains about 10,000 grains, more than the total number of stars we can see with the naked eye on a clear night. But the number of stars we can see is only the tiniest fraction of the number of stars that are. What we see at night is the merest smattering of the nearest stars with a few more distant bright stars thrown in for good measure. Meanwhile, the cosmos is rich beyond measure. The total number of stars in the universe is larger than all the grains of sand on all the beaches of the planet Earth. Among a hundred billion galaxies and a billion trillion stars, life and intelligence should have arisen on many worlds. But if artificial selection makes such changes in only a few thousand years, what must natural selection, working for billions of years, be capable of? The answer is all the beauty and diversity in the biological world. Here's how it works. Nature is prolific. There are many more creatures that are born than can possibly survive. So those varieties, which are by accident less well adapted, don't survive. Or at least they leave fewer offspring. Now, mutations, sudden changes in heredity, are passed on. They breed true. The environment selects those occasional mutations which enhance survival. And the resulting series of slow changes in the nature of living beings is the origin of new species. We'll encounter galaxies and suns and planets, life and consciousness coming into being, evolving and perishing. Worlds of ice and stars of diamond, atoms as massive as suns and universes smaller than atoms. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. We're about to begin a journey through the cosmos. In our tenure on this planet, we've accumulated dangerous evolutionary baggage, propensities for aggression and ritual, submission to leaders, hostility to outsiders, all of which puts our survival in some doubt. We've also acquired compassion for others, love for our children, a desire to learn from history and experience, and a great soaring, passionate intelligence, the clear tools for our continued survival and prosperity. The surface of the Earth is the shore of the cosmic ocean. Which aspects of our nature will prevail is uncertain, particularly when our visions and prospects are bound to one small part of the small planet Earth. But up there in the cosmos, an inescapable perspective awaits. National boundaries are not evident when we view the Earth from space. Fanatic ethnic or religious or national identifications are a little difficult to support when we see our planet as a fragile blue crescent fading to become an inconspicuous point of light against the bastion and citadel of the stars. People used to think that the sun was at the center of the galaxy, something important about our position. It turns out to be wrong. We live in the outskirts. The globular clusters are centered around the marvelous middle of the Milky Way galaxy. And then it turned out that this isn't the only galaxy. We live in this one, but there are many others. And as this picture reminds us, there are many different kinds of galaxies of which ours might be just this one. There are in fact a hundred billion other galaxies, each of which contains something like a hundred billion stars. Think of how many stars and planets and kinds of life there may be in this vast and awesome universe. I'm a collection of organic molecules called Carl Sagan. They're a collection of almost identical molecules with a different collective label. Some part of our being knows this is where we came from. We long to return. And we can, because the cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. Before us is the cosmos on the grandest scale we know. We are one planet. We are far from the shores of Earth in the uncharted reaches of the cosmic ocean. 
strewn like sea froth on the waves of space, are innumerable faint tendrils of light, some of them containing hundreds of billions of suns. These are the galaxies, drifting endlessly in the great cosmic dark. Those worlds in space are as countless as all the grains of sand on all the beaches of the Earth. Each of those worlds is as real as ours. In every one of them, there's a succession of incidents, events, occurrences, which influence its future. Countless worlds, numberless moments, an immensity of space and time. And our small planet, at this moment, here we face a critical branch point in history. What we do with our world right now will propagate down through the centuries and powerfully affect the destiny of our descendants. It is well within our power to destroy our civilization and perhaps our species as well. If we capitulate to superstition or greed or stupidity, we can plunge our world into a darkness deeper than the time between the collapse of classical civilization and the Italian Renaissance. But we are also capable of using our compassion and our intelligence, our technology and our wealth to make an abundant and meaningful life for every inhabitant of this planet, to enhance enormously our understanding of the universe and to carry us to the stars. As long as there have been humans, we have searched for our place in the cosmos. Where are we? Who are we? We find that we live on an insignificant planet of a humdrum star lost in a galaxy tucked away in some forgotten corner of a universe in which there are far more galaxies than people. We make our world significant by the courage of our questions and by the depth of our answers. We embarked on our journey to the stars with a question first framed in the childhood of our species and in each generation asked anew with undiminished wonder, what are the stars? I was so excited to know the answer that I opened the book breathlessly right there in the library. Stars, it said, were suns, but very far away. The sun was a star, but a close-up. Exploration is in our nature. We began as wanderers, and we are wanderers still. A new consciousness is developing, sees the Earth as a single organism and recognizes that an organism at war with itself is doomed. We have lingered long enough on the shores of the cosmic ocean. We are ready at last to set sail for the stars. And we, we who embody the local eyes and ears and thoughts and feelings of the cosmos, we've begun at last to wonder about our origins, star stuff, contemplating the stars, organized collections of 10 billion, billion, billion atoms, contemplating the evolution of matter, tracing that long path by which it arrived at consciousness here on the planet Earth and perhaps throughout the cosmos. Our loyalties are to the species and the planet. We speak for Earth. Our obligation to survive and flourish is owed not just to ourselves, but also to that cosmos ancient and vast from which we spring.